Hi my friends and welcome to another exciting one. Today we are going to take a look at a very essential tool inside Blender which is called snapping. So snapping help us align objects, edges, vertices and faces inside Blender with much precision. It helps increase the speed and speed up our workflow and then it increases accuracy. So let's take a look at how we can utilize snapping inside Blender. So to turn on snapping you have to come up to this icon here, this magnet icon, which represents snapping. So once we check it, we've turned it on, right? At the same time, we can do shift plus tab to turn it on or off, right? So without snapping, if I try to move this box here, you can see what we have, right? So let's say I want to create three boxes which are equally distanced from each other or which are equally flash to each other i'll do shift d i'll have to move it and then i'll have to guess where exactly this box is is it equally or what i will not even be able to tell unless i have snapping turned on and then i'll have that much precision needed so let me quickly select this x to delete it right so let's hit on shift plus tab or just click here to turn on your snapping once we have snapping turned on i'll do shift d and then you can see how easy it is to snap objects together, right? It moves with a lot of precision. So that's what snapping is. So if you, let me delete this. If we quickly toggle our menu, we can see we have a lot of options. In this tutorial, we try as much as possible to go through most of them, the most essential ones, so that by the end, you'll be able to really understand snapping and then you'll be able to use it inside your workflow, right? So for snapping, it can affect almost every operation inside blender we can do it inside edit mode and then both inside edit mode and object mode it affects our it can affect our rotation our movement our skill it can even affect our when we do extrusion and all other cool stuff so let's take a look at that so let's say we have this if we want to rotate it we do r rotate you can see we are rotating very freely freely it means snapping is not affected so to make snapping affect the rotation we have to come down here then we have to check affect right so now right now it's set that move so it's affecting only the move we can add rotation and then we can add scale as well so once we've added rotation and scale now if i hit on r and then i start rotating you can see our object is rotating with precision right so if you take a look at this top here we can see the precision which in which the the increment in which snapping is being used right like that so we have various forms of snapping we have increment we have grid we have vertex we have edge face volume and then the rest so let's take a look at each of them so now we have increment so it means we are snapping based on increment right so this increment is set by when we come to our scene properties we have unit and then we have unit scale so it's set by this number here which is unit scale the higher the unit scale the slower the increment so let's say if i set this to five then i hit on enter if i start moving you can see it moves very in a very small quantity right it increases in a very small quantity but if i set it to one and then i start moving it it moves a, a very big so the increment is based on the unit scale that we set here and then let's say we go into edit mode just to show that snapping actually affects everything almost inside edit mode and object mode i select this vertex here and then i try to move it you can see snapping is still being affected as well so let me add a loop cut here go to my first mode select this face hit on e for extrusion and then once i start to extrude you can see it's snapping based on increment as well so it means snapping is actually affecting everything inside our scene so that's increment next let's take a look at how great snapping works so let's select the great snapping and then to for the great snapping what it basically does is Blender will try to snap our object based on this grid that we have, right? So to really show that, let's do a rotation on this. So if we do R and then Z, you can see once I start rotating, you can see that yellow icon there, which is trying to snap based on the grid that we have on the floor here, right? 
let's tap into edit mode and then let me show you a very obvious example so let's say we have this space here once i start to move it you will see blender will try as much as possible to snap it to the grid at the bottom here so if i do g you see it's been snapped at the bottom here right but now let's just check on check this and then let's do g you see it's being snapped at the bottom here and then it will be snapping based on this grid here right so that's snapping based on grid and then next we have vertex snapping so for vertex snapping is straightforward as the name suggests so with this cube let's quickly add in another cube and let's bring it to the side then maybe scale it down a little bit let's do shift and then add this cube so for vertex snapping this cube is going to be snapping based on this vertex right so let me just add some loop cuts here so that we can easily experiment right i'll quickly turn on my wireframe so that we can easily see even though if we are out of edit mode right so once i select this and hit you don't really have to do that i just wanted to see the lines so that was why i turned on my wireframe right so once i have this selected and i hit on g it will start snapping on the vertices that we have on this ship right so it will start snapping on the vertices that we have on this ship so so now let's say we want to use this as the snapping base right instead of this so i'll have to bring my mouse here then snap but then blender will automatically decide which object it wants it to be the snapping point right so if we toggle our, our drop down once again we can see we have snap base here so we have closest so for the closest blender will automatically decide which um vertex is closer to which vertex and then you will use that as a base right we can set it at center and then it's always going to be snapped based on the center of the objects so you see it's snapping right at the center as to g you see it's snapping right at the center and then we can also set it to median so for the median you basically decide it basically snaps based on the 3d based on the point of origin so let's say i hold shift and then i left click i right click to set my point of origin here then i'll go to object set origin to 3d keza so that i move my origin to this point here and then i do g for snapping you see snapping based on where my origin is right so that's for the median and then we have active so active works when we have let's say we have we have two objects then we select these two right then once i hit on g this is the active object so this is the object that is going to be used for the snapping not the other object that i am moving so let's keep it to closest so before we move on to the edge one other thing that we can do inside blender is we can actually tell blender which which point it should snap towards right so first let me just reset the origin point so set origin to geometry just to bring our origin point in the middle and then to do that let's say we want to use this as the base we can hit on g for move and then hit on b and then we can select which point we want so let's say we select this point and then we can move our object and then it's always going to use this point to for the base of the snapping right so let's do it once again so hit on g for move and then b and then you will be brought in a state where you will be asked to select the point that you want so once we select this point you know we are always going to use this point as the base for the movement right so next we have our drop down we have our edge we have our edge 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 snapping so as the name suggests it's going to snap to the edges right so once i select this i hit on g it's always going to snap based on the edge that we have right let's say i want to snap it to this edge i can easily bring it towards the edge and then i can easily drag it towards the edge any of the edges on my object so that's edge snapping and then one thing to also keep in mind is let me select this control r tab into edit mode control r and then let me add in some loop cuts here right 
So one thing to also keep in mind is don't necessarily, let's say we want this, the base of this object to be right at the base of this edge, right? So we can do G, but then we want this object to stay at the same place. We can hit on G for move and then Z. And then once, since we have snapping on, we can just bring it to this side here. And then it's going to be snapped based on this. So if I go to my right to graphic view, we can see that it's actually the same. It's actually on a flat level with this base since we snapped it to here. Okay. So that's edge snapping. And then we have face snapping. So it does basically the same thing, but then it snaps the face. So if I S to bring this up and then well, for, for easy demonstration, let's push everything to the side and then let's add in an icosphere, right? So with the icosphere added, we can see the faces clearly. For for now, I think I can turn off my wireframe so that we can see the faces clearly, right? Let me bring this one box or maybe we can add in a cone. So let's just add in a cone and then let's scale the cone down, right? Let's bring it up like this, right? So with the cone down for for the faces usually what we would like to do is since we have the faces turned on we can do align rotation to target right so once we set align rotation to target and now let me just scale this down now if i hit on g for snapping you can see how it's easily snapping on these faces that we have here and then it's aligning the rotation to the face the, the face normals as well so you can easily move it to the side maybe create a duplicate to the side shift d create a duplicate to the side so easily as easy as that we can easily create objects that align based on the faces like this right so just for the same thing we can once we start moving g and then we hit on b we'll be able to select which face we want to use for the as a reference right and then we can easily move the faces to our contempt so that's face orientation we can easily use that so the use cases are endless you can easily use that to align objects to other objects very 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 easy yeah so basically that's it that's the basics i hope you learned something new no sorry before we go we have earth center and then earth center is very simple that that will be the last one we tackle. Sorry, that's not it. You know, I like I like to go as thorough as possible. So for edge center, let's say we select this. We have the snap turned on to edge center. It will basically find the edge. So let me go back and let me turn on my wireframe. It will. Let's say this is the edge that we want. This is the edge that we have. So let me just select this. Hit on G. You can see, since we have edge center, it is centering between this edge and then this edge here. So we always put it at the center so let's do it once again you see so it's just calculate the edge and then we'll put it right at the center even if it's inside or outside right so that's edge center for you very simple and then another thing you, you can do is you can select multiple snapping at the same time so we can have increment then we can hold shift and then we snap to vertex as well and then maybe snap to face so all of them are selected at the same time and then g it will work at the same time too right so that's it for today it's snapping for you i hope you learned something i hope it was very useful if it was please don't forget to consider subscribing and liking it's my friend here see you on the next one peace out